I think not many people in Bhutan read. And I think also the policy makers and some of the people in the municipality and the government, they don't read enough. And I think from a historical point of view, what happened is that until 50 years ago, we had no schools. I can remember as a child in the village, of course, my family, we were privileged, so we had a different kind of life. We never were hungry, but there were a lot of hungry people who had to work very hard, who did not have clothes, who could not go to school, who could not travel. Bhutan was a very unequal society. People who were working for you, they were the serfs. So the king, the third king in 1953, he said, no more slaves, everybody is equal citizen. It is much more drastic, it is much more impacting than democracy, for instance. Democracy was started. And in Bhutan, in 1962, there were hardly any schools, just a few primary schools. So many of us, people like my age group, we were sent to schools in India. We had to walk to reach the Indian border for 12 days. And uh, schools started growing, people started learning to read and write, but it was a very new concept because books like this you didn't see at home or in any kind of other house. You had to borrow it from the temple, bring it on an auspicious date and get the monks to read it for you. So it was, we were in oral society. <laughs> My own life, I live part in Thimpu, which is the urban society, and I often go back to my village, which is in central Bhutan, and still very rural. Unable to decide on a particular one, she took two and with the natural grace of a scurvy city woman. I wrote would have Circle of Karma because it was a story of many women in transition. The protagonist, Tsomo, her story is the story of my life, lives of my friends, lives of people I had heard about. And for me, it was important to show what village life was like, how women were treated, how what the social order was related to gender and how men and women perform their rules and what we perceived. So I wanted women to read it to see what they think about it. Unfortunately, again, it's not read very much. The reaction when I wrote the book mm -hmm. was, a lot of people saying, did you write about me? Was that your uncle? This, you know, everybody wanted to identify. Otherwise, I have not had one Bhutanese person who sits with me and tells me, can talk about the book. So I'm happy that some of the colleges have used this book as a reference reading book in the English literature. And another thing that I've changed a little bit is instead of writing novels and uh, books for elders, I feel I have to start with the children. Because I feel the children who have been born here, they have absolutely no connection. That's why I think the importance of stories they have to know that they had a past. Their parents came from the village, had a completely different life. And by writing this book, I wanted the readers to see that you are not born and brought and Timpu is Bhutan. Timpu is not Bhutan. Timpu is bits of Bhutan. It is not the Bhutan. To understand Bhutan, it's not just gross national happiness and Shangri-La and everything is pristine. We are human beings and we have problems. We have the uh, logo, <laughs> we have the label Buddhist and compassion. And when it's real life, very little of compassion and Buddhism. We have still quite a lot of people who think that we are inferior. 
In recent surveys that was done six, seven years ago, many women said it's okay if our husbands beat us. That kind of an attitude we have to change. And in actual numbers, we never, never had a tradition of women working in the offices or working in the private enterprise. They were always housewives. But because education was there, it has liberated, it has opened the minds of a lot of the people. But it is for the first time since the government came into place that we have for the first time a minister, uh, a woman who is a woman. And um, we also have three or four women in the top of the government and I hope they are conscious about them being selves women because that's often the problem. Women make a big climb up and reach the level and then they forget they're women. And I'm always surprised, but I admire women who can transit between modernity <laughs> and traditional life. A lot of women here, they carry handbags, they use lipstick and they always look for brand names. They know all this and then they present themselves like modern women here with all the makeup, all the clothes and everything. But when they go to the village, immediately they're able to do the village work. And for me, this transition, it's very smooth. And I find that really amazing. Also to put it in the context of what we, how we looked at women, how men looked at women, how uh, women themselves looked at. I have to show that women are capable of change, women are capable of things into their own life and making their decision. I had to come because mother is too old to do this work. Seong Doma was a different person in urban Thimpo. Just a few days ago, she had been in a shopping mall in Thimpo. So in my uh, book, Tales in Color, it really shows how women in the villages, their different traditions, different behaviors, different food ethics. And even I talk about how a girl struggles to study. She wants to go to school, but she's too old. And she always feels that she has to listen to her mother. Mother has to tell mm. her everything. But the story goes to the extent that finally she said, I will not mm. ask mother, I will do it myself. And it's such mm. a big liberation. But I wanted to show that people also in the rural areas have their own problems. And uh, I don't always say that the traditional was better than modernity. I think it, this is a critical time the change from uh, traditional lives to urban, anonymous mm -hmm. lives. Huh? There is no network, there is no uh, family together, you don't have a community. You know, everybody is just living individual lives, but not a community life. Mm -hmm. And I think that is yes. the crucial thing, that we have to build the communities again. Unfortunately, people of Bumtam, Bumtaps, have a kind of a sad label of being called the ghost Bumtaps. And many of the ghosts are supposed to be women. If you look at it rationally, this idea comes from the fact that the women were strong. Because women who looked different, who were strong, women who did not marry and lived by themselves were feared a little bit. And therefore it was very quick for the people to label her as a ghost or somebody with supernatural powers. There is a belief which is um, a folk belief, it's not from the religious belief, but every ninth woman is supposed to have supernatural powers. And some of these women, in the nights when they sleep, we believe that their consciousness 
goes out in the form of a fire to haunt the places. And uh, these fires are quite an extraordinary phenomenon. When you watch it, you know, there's one ball of fire which breaks up into many and, you know, kind of dancing and moving kind of fire. And it really fills the whole uh, area. Not so late in the night. It happens only in the night you see it. And it's really, really a dancing fire kind of a, a happening. And it's kind of an extraordinary concept. And we believe that these are the women. Many different consciousness of women coming and having a meeting. And unfortunately, they're having a meeting to do some harm. That is the belief, which I don't like at all. This is a common story. Most of the village people, the lives of the farmers in Bhutan is quite tough still. And life of a woman with a child, a single mother, it's even tougher. So this is the story about the woman who puts everything and grooms her son because she thinks only education can liberate them from the drudgery. Then when her son goes to school and the schools are so far away from the villages and the children have to walk so much, so she rather live near the school. She even builds a hut to stay with the son. So she makes this wonderful sacrifice, but she becomes so focused on her son and his success. Once she reaches the level of him being a uh, uh, succeeding in school, getting a job, going to a foreign country, earning money to buy a car, then she completely becomes, you know, not many people then look back and say, where did I come from? They forget that. And that's also true. If you go to the houses, you can see the signs of Novo Rich mm. huh? <laughs> with everything. You know, now it's to have all the Chinese uh, furniture, to have two, three televisions in the house and then they think this is success. So I was trying to show that this happens. But in the photograph, she has achieved, she has a big sofa, she has a lot of uh, plates and everything that you can buy in the market, but she's looking just into space, you know, she's just looking out and describe her hands to show that she worked really hard to live there. But now she's there all by herself and um, and what now? I draw towards the summer sun that sinks into the sea. Between two hearts, I long to be. Spot. 